All right, we're back at the DRZ 400SM and we're closing out this upgrade series. I'm gonna do front and rear tires on this, but what we're gonna do is focus on our rear tire change, our front and rear sprocket change, and our chain uh, swap out. Even though we're gonna do the front I'm also going to just focus on the rear because we're going to follow the same process for changing the tire. But I'm going to show you changing the tire and how I do it. So we've already removed his axle sliders and the chain guard. This is a good opportunity to swap out with some Allen head screws if you're going to leave your chain guard in place. I suggest you leave your chain guard in place but they've got those same stupid Japanese standard screw heads and I don't like them. So I'm gonna remove this and then we're gonna take you to the next step. All right, we're back over here at the, excuse me, DRZ. What I've got here is my, my grinder, my grinder wheel. Oh, got a little bit of goop on this somehow. Not what we're focusing on. Some people, may need to do this a little different way to use this chain to their advantage. I, I don't recommend it. Some people put the bike in gear and do all this stuff to, when it comes to the point of breaking the front sprocket free. I don't do that. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend having the tools. So what I'm going to do first before I do anything is I'm going to grind off I think I've already made my selection. I'm gonna grind off this rivet right here. I recommend using safety glasses. I got my glasses on. Don't be dumb like me. Which one was it? This one, okay. But I just got my little grinder and I'm gonna round this down. I'm gonna ground this down till it's even or below the surface so I can push it on out. It's, it's not rocket surgery. Come on, man. And keep in mind, I'm not a skilled, I'm not skilled with this. That made a thorough mess out of it. Okay. Now I know there's some skill toolsmen that will have a heyday with me on that one. But it doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just checking on my frame. Make sure we're in frame. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take a look here. I like using my tool here since my light is terrible. Yeah, I got it ground off. So what I like to do is I like to go here on the bottom side and this may, well, I'll try to do it up top just to keep it to where we can show you. We'll see what happens. What I've got is the Harbor Freight chain breaker tool. And you can see this thing is an absolute freaking beast. And I like it that way. But what I've also got, this came with, came with this little piece that sets down in the bottom. 
I don't like using it, so I took it out and set it down. What I've got also is I've got a 17 millimeter wrench, open or close in wrench, and a 14 millimeter. And what I'm going to do is get this centered up by hand in my poor lighting. And I'm just move this. I'm going to move my teat out, just my little driver out, just a little bit, so I can make contact here. So this outside piece pushes the pin through, and the inside gets you sized up. And on this back side, I can feel with its placement where the rivet is in the center. Again, my poor performance on the grinder is somewhat bothering me at this point. All right, I'm centering this up a little better. I think that should get us there. Pretty much there. Now I'm going to take my 14 millimeters, righty tighty. See if we can get this pin started. And it did right away. Hope everybody's enjoying the series so far. I'm getting some good feedback from some of you, and I'm excited about that. So the Harbor Freight tool works great. And as many of you, oh, there we go. I pushed it all the way through. As many of you have noticed that Derek's got a, oh, there we go. We pushed our pin through. Just gonna set that there. Derek's got a lot of, you know, he's got kind of a color theme going through here with the red and the gray, the white, and black. It's kind of flashy. Even got he's got his skateboard wheels here that are the red color and what we're gonna do and you know it's not for everybody but we're gonna put a red chain on I will say that the YZ 250 that I recently recently supermotoed also has a blue chain on it which I'm kind of excited about Here's the remnants of it right here. It's a little lighter blue, but it'll work. You're my boy, blue. So anyway, we got this chain broken. And again, if I wanted to keep this for a spare, what I would have to do would be go ahead and follow this procedure for this other link and get a master link for it. And we can evaluate this chain real quick. Gosh dang it, I forgot to put my gloves on when I started handling it. Oh well, the things I do for you people. Did he just say you people? Yes, you people that are watching my videos. We can see that this chain's in really good shape. He's kept it lubricated pretty good and there's nothing wrong with this chain. I mean, there's there's like 5,000 miles on this bike or so. And this sprocket, we did fudge a little bit. I was a little bit skeptical about it. But we did put a, I think we did a 44 or 43 tooth on this when we did these, these tires. And 
I'm not really worried about that right now. Let's see here. We got the sprocket, the sprockets to do yet. And frankly, I could have left this this part for for it with the chain on, but I figured it might be in the way and be a little bit grungy, but look at where I'm at. So I'm gonna do two things in this next segment and I'm gonna set it up right now. I'm going to break these nuts loose on the back side of this, this rear sprocket. And the reason I'm doing that now is I have this, I have this bike in a place where I can use the wheel for my advantage and not have to horse it around. And I'm gonna show you that process. The other thing is, is I'm going to use, I'm gonna set up a, get my sacrificial screwdriver to bend this front washer, this front sprocket washer loose. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. I think we might have said so in this other video. I use these clutch holders pliers that also have flywheel holder studs on it to hold the sprocket in place. I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit more. So I'm going to put those on, but I'm going to leave those off in the meantime. So just bear with me for a second and we'll get it, get it all set up. All right, we're back over here. I've got things set up. And what do you say we go ahead and do the front sprocket? I've already used my sacrificial screwdriver and bent back the washer that retains the, the nut for the front, the counter shaft sprocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my clutch holding tool to get into the area where the into the valleys of the the sprockets into the into the valleys of them. We'll just call it that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 30 millimeter impact socket and my retrofitted my adapter uh, from the old NICAD batteries to the uh, 20 volt uh, lithium. Uh, why throw away something that's perfectly good? Because everybody's going to the materials harvested from the earth, mined from the earth by child labor. I would say another word, but it'd probably get this video flagged. So what I'm doing is I've got this set up, it's folded back, our holder is holding it in place. I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna impact this thing off. No problem. Bingo. What's his name -o? Again, this Sprocket is probably perfectly fine, but we're going to replace it because we're replacing our chain. Chain and sprocket change. So, all right, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at our splines. They're in great shape. Take note, I didn't put this in gear. I'm, I know you can't see it, but I'm spinning, I'm spinning the counter shaft right here. No problem. Nice and easy. No one, nothing to see here. One thing I will say about this sort of setup is when you're done with it, make sure and disconnect your battery because it will discharge it. So I just kind of let it hang, hang on there. And we can do one of two things. Here we can use our 3 8 drive and put our Allen. Allen's on there. That's the easy way. We don't want to do it like that. I've already broken one of these loose here. What I'm doing is I'm breaking these loose so I don't have to do that when I have the wheel removed. 
I want to do that. I mean, one might be tempted to just stick the impact on here using the 3 8 That is an easy way to strip out these bolts that are hard to find. Uh, it's got a lock nut on the back of them, and that's what we're after. I've got my 12 millimeter over here, and set up my battery here. I have a battery underneath here to kind of help this tire bite. And it's probably gonna break this loose, but I've had it happen both ways before. Yeah, it came out, no problems. Nothing to see here. But now I've got it moving and breaking loose that way because I did thread lock these when I installed it. Now I got it broken loose. Note how I'm holding that with kind of my underside of my forearm here, and I'm able to break it loose with that. Yeah, it's broken loose. These are lock nuts, so, so there's that one. Why do you say I do one more? Now, I don't have any problem grunting this thing off, but why work harder when you don't have to? Broke loose. I'm going to make sure it's broke loose. We're not going to take it all the way off. Might as well do them all for you since I'm showing off. The next thing that we're going to do is remove the rear wheel. And this is a 170, or excuse me, a 150, 70. The Shinko 805, it's a really wide tire. What we're putting back on there is the Dunlop, Dunlop GPR 300, 150, 60. 150, 60, 17, and it's still a pretty wide tire, but we don't have any chain rub associated with it. There we go. So we'll do, we'll do them all. People complain about me being long-winded on my videos. I choose to embrace it. <laughs> Again, I'm just breaking these loose. All right, I've got them all broken loose. That's great. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I don't think I have it over here handy. Maybe I do. Look at there, we got it ready to go. And I just left this disconnected here. So I'm just gonna look like I'm Jacking in a mag. Yeah, brother. This has got to keep on it for for locking in place. We're not gonna get that crazy. No problem. And I'm just gonna back that back off so I don't run down my battery. And I'm gonna keep track of our washer. I'm just gonna set that on our spacer. Kind of close quarters over here. I'm gonna remove my I'm going to go ahead and leave my battery, my extra battery in place. I 
lot of times, this is where a lot of people get hung up. I just took the brake, the brake caliper, and laid it off to the side. And I put both of our spacers up here on our battery. And just like that, we've got our wheel free of the motorcycle. And I have a battery that is up on the front wheel, under the front wheel, so this whole thing didn't tilt over. So now we're gonna go into, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sprocket. I'm not gonna show you that. Then we'll go over to the tire changing station. All right, we've removed our sprocket. And I'm just gonna leave it off. And I wanna introduce you, and there's been other parts of this channel where I've shown my Nomar tire changer, but this is it. And I've got a new tool here that you can use instead of removing your core on your tubeless tires, we're gonna use it anyway on this one, just for the sake of doing it. But I will probably still remove the core out of it, but we'll see. But it's just a piece that screws onto the valve stem and it releases the air. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I've had this I've changed tires previously with the with this for a big big tire setup or big wheel setup. So I might have to adjust it a little bit once we get the bead braking done. I'm just letting that let the air out, making a little bit of room for myself. Probably should have done that in the first place. So it's still releasing air. If you can't hear it, let's see. Where's my breaker bar? It's right over here behind the camera. Dewey is ill-prepared. Okay, now that's... I'm going to leave it in place just for the time being. So what I'm going to do is get into position there we go, to break the bead. And the bead breaker on these Nomar Cycle Hill series is on the floor. And that's fine. So I'm putting that into position. And I'm using my spray lube here just to help it break the bead a little bit better. Gives it a little bit of lubrication so when it does break loose, it'll just go ahead and break on over. Whenever I break the bead on a tube tire or a non-tube tire, I always take into account where the valve stem is, and that is right here. So I don't want to be putting pressure down there at that point. So I'm off to the side. As a matter of fact, just to make me feel better, I'm going to move it over just a little bit more. And this Shinko is a very rigid tire on the sidewalls. I'm making sure, yeah, that my bead is broken loose, and it is. So I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing.
I've got a set of GPR 300s. I'm going to try them out on my DRZ. I've been running the Q3s. Oh, yeah. Broke that bead loose. Spin it around just to make sure that we got it on the other side. But it dropped down, so yeah, it's it's broken loose. So now is the part where you get to see me struggle a little bit. Because I don't know if this is set up. Got my 14 millimeter over here handy. And I've got my guide pole here in the, the center. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move this one out one more, but I, before I do that, I'm gonna Okay, I might have guessed correctly. Yeah, I think I guessed correctly. Sometimes there's multiple settings that these will work on. So I'm just moving these spools closer to the center of the rim so that it'll clamp down on them. I've been known to use my impact driver to make this quicker. But Sometimes you just want to feel it. And so using hand tools gives you that dexterity. And that's just my preference on this process. Oh yeah, I chose the correct settings. That saved us a lot of swear words. So I've got these spools hooked on to the rim. And now I'm just tightening them into place so that I'll have something to get my leverage on. this series I'm not just going to leave it undone what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a conclusion where I just show everything that I've done on this bike on this series and I may even give it a ride I think that'd be best and we'll cut in that video just so we can share that yeah I think that would be best These Nomars initially come with some studs to be able to lock to, or go to concrete, to be able to go into concrete and uh, fix it in that place, but that pretty much marries it to that area. So what I chose to do was put use this base, this plywood base, as a mobile platform where I can stand on and use my weight to be my my base anywhere I wanted to go. They do make a hitch mount to where you can use a hitch for your truck, but 
that costs money and I didn't want to spend that. Nomar makes excellent products and they're in Missouri and that's American made and that's why I like them. So at this point, I'm gonna spray a little bit extra lube. And again, it's like, like a teaspoon of this, of their paste that they use to change their, or they recommend to use to change the tires. And I got the bucket of it. So here's where I look like an idiot or not. These have an anvil head on them. So I'm putting it in there flat. And I'm finding underneath the bead, there it is. And then what I do is I rotate it to where the anvil's under the bead. And usually I like to walk it over. And then just like that, we started the process. So I'm walking back around here because I'm up against my garage door over here. Okay, and I use my fulcrum and spin the dude right off. Now this, if we were talking about a non-tube tire, this is where we just go ahead and spin off the other end. But this is where I remove my tool and I go over here right behind the camera and grab my 12 millimeter which I did not say, shame on you. Wait a second, can we? I think what we'll do here is we will rotate up just a little bit so you can see a little bit more what I'm doing. Sorry about that guys and gals or nobody. I wanna take this opportunity to apologize absolutely nobody. Dewey's Garage does what Dewey's Garage wants to do in his garage. I don't think that would pass for being my own catchphrase. Catch so all I've done is I've loosened our keep nut and now what I can do is lift up on this this tire and push our tube valve stem hopefully <laughs> through the these these side walls there we go I'm gonna reach in from the bottom there we go and then I can remove my tube Oh man, and this tube is still getting looped up, and it's in great shape. So what I'm going to do is, I want to keep it clean. <laughs> We're going to have to wipe it down anyway. So I'm just going to hang it over here on the fender of Derek's bike, and we're going to continue on. Some people would go a different route and just I've seen people put the bead on both sides of the wheel, but that's not how I do it, even on dirt tires. I, there's in, interesting how there's many ways to, different, to do the same thing. So I'm just following that same process, and I'm sneaking this underneath the bottom. Let's see. I like to have the back side elevated. These, these tires, oops, these tires with these stiff sidewalls can be a little bit of a bear, but And I'm leaving all of this in here for full disclosure. Okay, now I'm underneath it. 
and I'm just following the same process. There we go. I just moved my my 12 millimeter, and we have the tire removed just like that. I'm just gonna set it over here. And we're using a used tire, the one he had on it, before it got to be winter time. And he's kept it in a pretty clean environment. But I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna clean out, just wipe it free of any junk. Oh yeah. Nice and clean. Remember, this is our sprocket side. And we pay attention to our rotation. This is the clockwise side. So that's our brake rotor side. So that side goes down because our brake rotor is down. And right here is my tub o goop. And it's a vegetable based material some other tire changing um, systems use it too. But remember, we're also needing to make sure that our tire, our, excuse me, our tube stays lubed. Lube the tube. And I use this same material for that. Now, some people might say, well, Dewey, I don't know about that. That's fine. You're, you're welcome to your own opinion. But my tubed tire for my track bike, my YZWR abortion, that's what I use in it, and I've not used any different tubes. <laughs> and I probably should be more proactive about it. But I've used the same tubes for like five years. <gasps> Blasphemy! The scandal. But I put a little bit of this juice down inside. And there's, I'm going to re-lube the, the tube itself, even though it is still quite lubricated with this material. We even still have our portion of the tire labeled for our valve stem. I don't really pay much attention to that most of the time, but we can do it anyway. I must have rotated it some. Again, my light is rather poor. No, there it is, right there where I left it. I'm also going to go around and clean any of the material, water, or whatever on the wheel itself. And I'm also going to lubricate it some. Even up here on the very top rim. What is this guy doing? Trust me, it's my garage and I do it my own way. Very happy about that. This is making this video kind of long. If you want to complain about it being long, that's your prerogative. Nobody watches this stuff anyway. <laughs> There we go, we got a tube. And I'm just re-lubricating it on the outside. Some people like to use baby powder. That's fine. I don't.
I was a tire changer, and I was exposed to a lot of that. Could I could, could I get a, to be a part of the class action lawsuit, the talc <laughs> class action lawsuit? <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. Okay, here's where things can get a little weird. Some people think that you don't, you can just put the, the tube right on in there, no problem. And you can't, you're right. But you need to be, at some point before we put the top part in, we need to be, I want to put a little bit more air than what's in this thing, in there, so that we don't pinch the tube. I don't pinch tubes. And I'm not going to start today. I'm not going to do it. I refuse to pinch tubes. So I'm just rolling that down in to the wheel. I'm a little bit off. I'm a little bit off today. There we are. And so I've lined up our valve stem on our tube and rolled it within the wheel. ready. And I'm just locating it. And this, this can be a little, this can take a little bit of time. second or two. And just like that, my nut fell off. Tragic. Do try not to have your nut fall off mid-tire change. What I'm doing is I'm starting this nut on our valve stem. Whilst my fingers are coated in no margin. And I've got a little like, excess coming out of the top of our wheel and I've got some on our tire. But fear not, all is not lost. We can wipe up the excess. And I'm not making that completely tight right now either. And I'll use a little bit of brake clean to get some of that off the outside of the, on the tire and whatnot. I'm not worried about it. And I'm just gonna line this up real quick. Our dot got moved a little bit. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add just a skosh more of air to, to it. Because I'm not in the business of pinching tubes. That's all we needed. Just a skosh. And I've got our yellow thing, which is kind of a bead keeper. Not a bead keeper, a bead keeper. And we go back with our Nomar handle. And I could push this tire on my hand if I wanted to. Let's see, I'm trying to show you this. So this has two knobs on it here. Got a little bit of excess material from the last time. And they just both set down in the, between the bead of the tire and the wheel. And I just roll it on. But, I don't just roll it on. We get to a point where we start to get a little bit of resistance. And then we got to watch for the back side of the tire and lift it up and keep it in what a lot of people would call the drop center. 
the drop center and we push the top down into the drop center. And just like that, we have our tire and our wheel. Now, I've still got to set the bead and balance this tire and wheel combination. And I'm not going to show that. Um, we'll do that another time. This video is getting long enough, but I'm just tightening down our nut. I wanted to show this as a part of the process because technically this does count as an upgrade. I've changed a lot of tires over the years going to the track. You use your tires up pretty fast. There, that's snug. Saved me a lot of cash doing that. Make sure and put the lid on your bucket. So now I'm removing, removing the tire from the tire changer by loosening up these spools. I'm starting to get a little warm because it's fairly warm outside but also excessively windy out of the south. Hopefully I can get out and do some riding tomorrow. Okay. We're just going to add enough air to There's going to be a little bit of air escaping from the inside of the tire and wheel combination. While it's doing that, I'm going to grab my tire pressure gauge. Perhaps you can hear it. The rest of the, so that's that, that bead, and I think it may have set on the back side already. Okay. And this is going to be a bit high, but I'm going to start out there. Okay, so we're just setting at 15 PSI. For stunners, they'd be like, heck yeah. But I'm going to set it to 25, and we'll do... We'll move from there. About 23. stem in place, then I'm going to clean up this tire and wheel combination, and we'll be ready to move on to balancing. Again, I'm not showing that. I'll see you in a minute, and we'll move on to putting the sprocket into place. All right, we're on a bit of a timeline here, but we're going to go ahead and 
torque our front, our counter shaft sprocket into place. I've put some blue thread lock on it to secure it into place. And I wanted to make sure and get it where we want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is get it into place and put it to 79.5 foot-pounds. I do have it in gear for what it's worth. But the main thing I'm gonna do is have this securely locked. And I'm making sure that I'm making contact with the sprocket and not the cases. Yeah, there we go. Got our nut, our impact driver on here. We're going to set it to 79.5 foot pounds. Let's see where we've got it. I had it at 50 something here for the clutch. So we're at 70. Nine and a half. There we go. The sweet sound of victory. Some people might find this following step controversial. I don't have it with me right now. But I'm going to grab this little lip with my, with my channel locks and I'm going to bend it over and we'll be in good shape. Next thing I'm going to do real quick is do the same sort of process. I'm going to go 21 and a half foot pounds to our sprocket, our rear sprocket here, and we will be in good shape. Sorry, I've got a delivery at the door, so I've got to go. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to put the wheel into place. All right, we're back over here. We've got our stuff torqued down into place. We're going to go ahead and do our rear sprockets and torque them up. And I've got it set to 21 and a half foot pounds. And this is a delicate thing because I'm using a half inch There's that. And I'm going to do this in a crisscross pattern here. So I'm going straight across and on the underneath side here. Crisscross them to the other side. Why am I using the half inch drive, you might ask? My 3.8 proved, it, proved itself to be unreliable. There's that. So we're going to do these two, finish these two, and then I'm going to have to go crisscross to here. My phone is what I've been using to do my videos with, and my battery is about to die. It's 
especially with me bumping it like that. Sorry about that, phone. There's that. So we're going to go crisscross to over here. And I was not so truthful. I've got, I'm going to wait to balance this until this process is done. So we've got a crisscross there. And then we'll crisscross to up here and we should be done. And I'll go back over this and torque them to ensure one more time. There's that. So we've gone top to bottom, side to side, and then crisscross. So the next thing I'm going to do is balance our tire, then reinstall it. I'll show you me reinstalling it. All right, I feel like I've got some explaining to do. I know I said I would install the wheel and show you that. This video is getting long and frankly, it was a beautiful day today and I'm trying to hurry things along. See this beautiful red EK chain here? It's too long. It's a probably a 120 link chain. And what I've done is laid this out so that we can evaluate where it is that this chain needs to be cut at because we need to cut this chain just like we needed to cut this thing off initially. And what I've done here is I've tried to leave it where it was initially adjusted to and we ended up being to make it to where we're as far forward as it could be and give us plenty of adjustment and it being closer to where it was. But we ended up being in that half link uh, point. Case, case end point, it was meaning I would need to cut this, this rivet here for it to be where it was as it was adjusted. Well, as you can see, that would leave half of this master link, if you will, or link. So I, I loosened our adjustment bolts and ran them in toward the engine on the subframe on both sides. And I've got this just tight enough to hold it in place so it doesn't slide around on me. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, as in today is the next day from the previous segment, it was beautiful out and I was riding. So I'm going to cut this chain right here. I'm going to cut it right here. And I'm leaving it marked here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all this other chain from it and I might even try to cover some of this chain and I'm going to do a better job cutting it. And then I'm going to use our chain tool to push out the link holder piece, the rivet, if you will. And I'm going to place our master link in place. I'm not going to show all of that. I might show the part of the installation. And then we'll be at our ending point because again, these videos are getting kind of long and I'm, that's not my intention, but we're going to install a rivet style master link. Some people prefer clip style so you can quickly remove it and go back together. Well, he's got a couple of them, but they're gold, but we're going to rivet this thing on there. We're going to leave it at this gearing and we're not gonna mess with anything like that. But this one's red and it'll blend in just right. So we're gonna do that tomorrow and we're gonna wrap this series up and then I'm going to do a compilation video of me evaluating everything that we've got left to do. 
or that we've done. And I'm going to show how it goes all together. I've still got to do this front wheel. I'm not going to show that to you because we're going to put it back to the D208, which was what was on there. So we'll see you tomorrow, which will be just in a few seconds as far as you're concerned. Okay, we're back. It's the next day. And I got new glasses. Excited about that. So what we're going to do, we've, we're we're going to recap things and I know we're kind of doing that. It's been beautiful outside and this may sound a little different. I'm trying my new glasses and I've got a microphone on here. It's a wireless microphone. And, but to recap, we've shortened the adjustment quite a bit, and we've lined up our chain on here where we need to cut our chain on this rivet right here so we can push it out the way we did on the first one and use our master link to connect these two parts together. That's going to work. But what I want to do is I want to minimize how much the rest of this chain gets with any flying materials. Compromising materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a better job this time of grinding down. I promise! And you might not see it. This video is getting stupid long. But I'm sending it anyway. I'm sending it. OSHA would have a fit with this because I'm cutting towards my hand with one hand. We're almost there. Okay, we we'll through there. I'm going to continue this, and then we're going to finish it. You get the job. You get the idea. What you also get the idea of is that the microphone was absolute shit. So we're not going to use that anymore. What I'm showing you here is that I've got the master link lubed up, the O-rings pieced together on each side of the link. This is a rivet-style link and I'm showing that I'm aligning the chain tool opening with the rivets and I'm showing that because it's kind of hard to get this on video so what I did here is line that up and I'm trying to show that and then what we're doing is we're going to go from one side to the other side pushing the rivet towards us towards the camera until it's the same thickness or width as the other chain links and even on each of the two rivets. Okay, we were smart enough to turn the light on and so now you can see down in the well the rivet that we're wanting to push towards us and through that top of the master link and I will use the 17 millimeter to 
force that in. Well, we'll just say, ask it to go through there. In case it doesn't want to, we want to back off of it. Yeah, I'm explaining something here. But I'm also not realizing that I'm not recording audio. So what I'm going to do is press that together with the tool very slowly from going from one side to the other, one side to the other, until it's the same length as the other links. Length of links. Width. So that we don't end up having it too close together or too far apart, creating slop or too much grip or lack of clearance, we should say. So that pretty much wraps this up. I don't know what the heck I'm saying the rest of this video, but I'm going to leave it dead space just so you can enjoy the silence and not have to hear my voice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.